Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Rosie and I graduated from the University of Oxford last year and at the end of September I will be starting a master's at Cranfield University. So I'm thinking about things that I need to pack very prematurely, but I am thinking about them. So I thought why not share with you some things that I definitely would take and perhaps didn't really know to take when I was starting my undergrad. If you haven't seen my previous video, that is all about things that I definitely wouldn't take and things to avoid. It has got a few things that I would take in there as well and just some general tips and tricks. So I would check that out. It's in the pinned comment. Enjoy. Number one is bed linen. You will not get bed linen. You might think, well, of course we'll take bed linen. I don't know, but you do need bed linen. I would recommend taking one duvet cover because it's not something that you're gonna be needing to wash as much as everything else. But I would take two of however, whatever sheets you have. Like I know I have a bottom sheet, a top sheet, and pillowcases. I would recommend taking two sets of those so that while one's in the wash you can put another lot straight on clean and yeah it's so much easier. <laughs> of course you can buy this when you get there but just saying that you will need that whether you buy that when you're there or not. Argos is a really good place to buy bedding. Pillows are good from Primark but again Argos sell them and also, I would definitely recommend getting some form of mattress topper. This might not necessarily be a mattress topper. I used a mattress topper in most of the time, but it was actually cheaper to just get a second duvet and use that as a mattress topper. So I would recommend maybe looking at prices, seeing what you'd rather get because the beds in unis are not great and you will need something but maybe it will be cheaper to just put a duvet underneath your bottom fitted sheet. Also I wouldn't recommend getting a white duvet cover because it may be aesthetic but it might mean that you have to wash it more and you don't realise quite how much white stains even just from like you lying on it. Number two is extension plugs. I think most of these sorts of videos will say extension plugs, but that just shows how important they are. You will find that uni rooms do not have enough plug sockets. They just don't. <laughs> For example, if you take a fridge that takes up a socket at all times, you want one to charge your phone, one to charge your laptop, which may be on most of the time. One, if you've got fairy lights, which will be probably plugged in at all times, you're gonna be using up your plugs very quickly and it is better to just take an extension plug. Just be careful though that your extension plug is one of those fire regulated ones because you can get some which on designed in a specific way and they end up setting on fire basically because they've got too much power. Number three is coat hangers. There was no coat hangers. <laughs> there never is coat hangers. Sometimes people might have left them from previous years but like they don't automatically give you coat hangers so when you get there and you want to get your stuff unpacked as fast as possible so that you can go meet friends and things you don't want to just have to pile things up in your cupboard or go on a trek for coat hangers because I don't think they're particularly easy to get hold of like you have to order them online or from Amazon that is online I meant Argos <laughs> Argos but coat hangers yes take especially if once you've taken clothes out of your wardrobe you're gonna be leaving empty coat hangers I would assume so just take them with you number four is a clothes area or a clothes horse I'm not entirely sure what they're called but I mean one of these I got this one from Argos. This is this feels like an Argos sponsored video, but basically Argos was across the road from my college at Oxford, so we just got stuff from there. It was so easy. This is a very good purchase. You will find that people will not take them and then they'll want to use yours um, and then suddenly you can't find it because another person has nabbed it from the wash thing thinking it's communal when it isn't and then you won't be able to dry your clothes when you want to dry them. So just keep it in your room or your kitchen. If your room's not big enough to dry your clothes, then you could put it just outside your door or like I said, in the kitchen. It just is so much easier. Otherwise you're gonna be hanging clothes on every cupboard door, every desk, every chair back, the table all over the kitchen. It's so much easier just to have one of these. And from my experience, 
there's none already there like in the washrooms or anything and plus you don't really want to leave your clothes in the washroom for longer than they need to be definitely not your underwear number five finally is drawing pins or one of those push pins because you're gonna wanna put photos up and documents and timetables and all that sort of thing and you won't have any drawing pins. <laughs> you need lots. You can get them from Ryman's or WH Smith, I assume the internet, loads of different places. They're not expensive and it just makes life so much easier because when you've got those cork boards, chances are you're not allowed to put anything on the walls other than on the space of the cork board and blue tack does not stick to those nor does those sticky pads i've tried both and in the end just had to get some drawing pins from my personal experience if you want to put up fairy lights around your room drawing pins are the safest option because they hold it in place and don't rip the paint off when you take them off like sellotape or blue tech does. On the same note, photos. Definitely take some if you can, but whether they're used on like Photobox, PicMonkey, Snapfish, Vistaprint, can you tell I've ordered a lot of photos. All of these websites have like free photo deals where you get a certain amount of photos and just pay for postage. It's a very good deal. They're very good quality. Mine, in fact, you can see mine behind me. I have a whole wall in my bedroom at home of my uni photos that I've just repurposed in here. But it just does make you feel a bit more comfortable with your space, like it feels yours. It makes it more like a home and as you go through uni obviously your photos will evolve with you and it's just nice to have a piece of personality and fun and friends with you at all times. So those are the five things that people might not have told you to take that I definitely would recommend but with stationery while well, you're probably thinking obviously I'm gonna take stationery I'm going to do a degree but there are some items of stationery that I think are definite yes please do take it so I've made a list of things that I used regularly and that is colored pens and highlighters to highlight articles to make mind maps to do your notes and things like that black pens lots of them they will just go missing at all times. You can get really cheap packets of just loads of black pens, just black biros, and they do the job. Notebooks, obviously you can buy those at uni, but notebooks are necessary, as you would probably expect, considering you are going to do a degree. You might think, oh, but I'm gonna do it all on a laptop. No, you might do your lecture notes on a laptop, but if you are gonna do any form of like going over your notes, do that on a notepad because otherwise you're not gonna have the muscle memory. So if you can write, try. <laughs> if you can't write, there are other ways of going over notes like using voice notes and listening to them and recording them. So don't panic too much if you know that that's not something you can do, but do take notepads. <laughs> I think A4 notepads are most useful. And if you're feeling a little bit bougie, take a different color for each module that's something that you know you might not know until you get there so maybe you could order like a pack of four in different colors i'm pretty sure you can get those from almost everywhere and then just wait until you know the titles of your modules there you go color coordinated <laughs> on that same note color coordinated files are a very good idea match the files to your notebook and it makes your life so much easier i'm saying this as if i did that i didn't that would just be my ideal life I bought files that were on offer in Sainsbury's. They are really nice files, I have to say, but I just got what was left over in Sainsbury's in the sale and it worked for me. Just make sure they're lever arch and not those teeny tiny ones because you're gonna have so much more work than you anticipate. Taking some smaller files for things like bill documents and banking stuff and all of like important I don't know if you're getting a job to put your pay slips in. All of my pay slips are in a folder with like my P60s and all that is all in one folder. So that really helped as well because it meant that you've not just stuffed all of these random letters in a box. Get a folder for them. USB is another one that you will need because you want to back up your stuff. If you haven't got a backup backup device, then either use Cloud, Drive, Dropbox or a USB to do that. 
and also you might be doing presentations and stuff so a USB is necessary for that. Laptop again I think is a pretty straightforward one. You are gonna be much better off with a laptop and obviously I know they're really expensive. There are cheap ones that you can get that are perfectly fine. You do not need a MacBook. You do not need a 600, 700 pound, even, oh, I don't know how much a MacBook's like over a grand. It's ridiculous. You don't need that. You don't need a high power laptop. You just need one that can access like Word, PowerPoint, email and the internet. I think mine in, I got my first laptop in first, for first year of uni and it was an HP one and it was about 250 pounds like a big purple thing and by the end of uni it, I had worn it out so I have a new laptop now but that one did me fine throughout the whole of uni so you do not need an expensive laptop but a laptop is something that you will need a lot of things are online now especially with the current situation, access to the internet from your room is gonna be quite important, I think. On that same note, take an ethernet cable in case the Wi-Fi is bad, because there will be old ethernet ports in your room, or at least there was in my accommodation at Oxford anyway, and they will help you get on the internet when edgerome is being really bad, and edgerome is often really bad. I think a stapler and a hole punch are good as well, especially if you've got a lever arch file, but again, not really necessary, just you will get annoyed at yourself for not just buying one for cheap at the start because every time you want one you have to borrow someone else's and also for the kitchen I would say the one thing of like unnecessary equipment that would be good to have is a tin opener no one takes a tin opener because they don't think about it so just take one keep it in your room never leave it in the kitchen <laughs> it will go missing but I keep coming up with more things but a kettle if you're living in a flat with a kitchen connected you don't need a kettle but if you're like me and doesn't like coming into contact with other humans at certain times in the early morning get a kettle for your room and then you can have your coffee or your tea in peace and finally a fridge check with your uni if you're allowed one but a mini fridge is definitely very useful even if it's just for putting drinks in but don't get one that's like a drinks cooler because it doesn't go cold enough to store food so if you're gonna want to start putting like salad or milk in your fridge then get one that's an actual mini fridge but you have to check that your accommodation allows that i think most do all right nothing's coming to me immediately so i'm just gonna end it there uh if i think of anything else i'll put it in the comments but if you think of anything else again please put it in the comments because everyone's experience is different so if someone like brothers sisters aunts uncles friends or yourselves have experienced uni in a different way and would take something else i would love to know about it and other people would also love to know about it as well so thank you for watching i hope it was helpful if it was please give me a thumbs up and i'll see you in my next video bye